Hello everyone! Welcome to my guide for the Bren Gun in Battlefield 5. The Bren Gun is one of the light machine guns of the support kit, and probably the most underrated LMG in the game, due to the placement of the magazine inside of the field of vision of the user. It is unlocked at support kit level 8, and thus is your first LMG unlock after the KE-7. There are many LMGs in the game, so why exactly should you use this one? Let's take a look at the base stats. It comes in with the 514 rounds per minute fire rate, which puts it squarely at the last place of all the LMGs in the game. On the flip side, similarly to the Lewis gun, this makes controlling the recoil a lot more easy, which is a huge benefit for the intended engagement ranges of this gun. The base ammo count of the Bren gun is a moderate 30 rounds per magazine, which is about average for the LMG weapon class. The control and accuracy stats of this gun, on the other hand, are far and above any other LMG in the game. And yes, it even trumps the KE-7 that everyone loves to complain about. This makes it the most accurate weapon that the support kit has access to, and is the reason that most people enjoy this weapon on larger, more open maps like Hamada or Narvik. But as per usual, those are only the base stats. So let's take a look at the specialization tree, which is actually pretty interesting for the Bren gun specifically. As always, there are two types of Bren gun setups you can specialize in. Both setups increase the control and accuracy of the gun, but focus on different playstyles. The first is a setup which will increase the general accuracy and control of the gun, as well as reduce the weapon ready time by 15%, no matter the circumstance. As such, this setup is often favored by the more run and gun kind of players. The second setup is a setup that focuses more towards the stationary side and is designed for more long range engagements as it increases the stationary accuracy, as well as improve your bipod so the gun becomes a literal laser whenever you get the chance to set up and choose the targets. Both choices are very viable, as they each increase the accuracy of the Bren gun, just for different circumstances and playstyles. With the base ammo count of 30, you can expect to fire the gun for a little over 3.5 seconds, which is a bit above average for most LMGs in the game. The weapon itself does not feature a magazine size improvement, and as such, you'll be able to easily learn exactly how long you can hold down your fire button before you run out of ammo, no matter the setup. The Bren gun is the laser gun among the fully automatic weapons in Battlefield 5. That does not, however, mean that you aren't required to control the existing, yet low, recoil. Especially when you're nearing the end of the magazine, the weapon likes to jump it into a bit of a kick which is also indicated by the weapon producing a slightly different firing sound during the last 5 or so bullets. Personally, I choose to go with the run and gun setup, but as previously mentioned, for this weapon in particular, both setups that I'll be presenting are more than viable and you should try out both to see which one fits your playstyle better. For my setup, I like to take the ported barrel in the first row, as a decrease in horizontal recoil is extremely valuable since controlling the vertical recoil is a lot easier. Additionally, the quick reload perk doesn't really add anything to the gun that it desperately needs. The 30 round magazine is more than enough to kill 4 to 5 players per reload, especially with the laser like accuracy this gun can provide. If you find yourself running out of ammo and being caught constantly while reloading though, I still wouldn't recommend the quick reload perk, but instead recommend to get better at the game. The second and third rows, as per usual, are where our previously mentioned two choices come in. On the left side, we have the first setup which will decrease your vertical recoil, as well as lower your weapon ready time by 15%. On the right side, we have the second setup, which will greatly reduce the overall recoil of the Bren gun, while being stationary, as well as lower your ADS time by 33%. And as always, these are mutually exclusive, so you gotta make your choice starting at the second row. The first setup is for those among you that like to counteract recons, flank the enemy team, and help out your team with a more run and gun approach. I would call that the more offensively focused playstyle of the two, as you'll be spending more time near the front and attacking objectives, to make good use of your high accuracy and laser-like precision in taking out high priority targets at medium range. The second setup is for those among you that favor a more laid-back or defensive approach to the support playstyle. Your brain run will be extremely accurate, especially when standing still and having set up your bipod, to the point where you can easily full auto-fire across just about every map without much issue. Your positioning would be more reliant on hard cover near our objectives as you don't have the luxury of the reduced recoil, as long as you're moving and you don't want to easily get sniped by standing in the open. As such, you'd be tasked with providing accurate supporting fire against enemy MMGs, recons or medics as your priority targets, as well as defending the objectives from incoming attackers. Following that, I take the decreased vertical recoil and the 15% decreased weapon ready time on road 2 and 3. 
For the last row, I can only really recommend the high velocity bullet, as it is in effect at all times and isn't bound to a buggy bipod system. But, if you're a person that really enjoys the bipods in the game, uses them a lot, or wants to use the second spec tree set up properly, you can always try taking the bipod perk and see how it works for yourself. The increase of accuracy this provides is quite substantial, but also situational. The optics you can choose for the Bren gun all work more or less fine. The 3 times stope is actually a very good choice for the Bren gun for once, as the weapon's recoil is minimal, specifically with the second setup and the bipod deployed. Additionally, your engagements are medium to long range, which the 3 times scope excels at. I would definitely recommend taking it, or at least trying it out. Personally though, I take the AE sight on all of my guns, as mentioned in the Lewis Guide Guide. I like the slight 1.25x magnification, and with Bren Gun's ability to fight primarily at medium to long range, it really helps over the 1x reflex sight. The support gadgets I would recommend for the Bren Gun is the AT Mine if you've chosen the second spectre choice, as it will be spending most of your time defending positions more so than attack. This will give you a way to deal with advancing armor and thus increase your overall efficiency in defending an objective. If you've chosen the first spec tree choice, I would recommend the AT Grenade Pistol, as it will allow you to quickly and efficiently remove fortifications that the enemy might have erected to hide themselves from your laser-filled wrath. I currently always recommend the ammo pouch over the crate. If a future patch increases the visibility of the ammo crate, I'll put an annotation on the video right now. Once buffed, I would recommend the ammo crate for the second spec tree setup, but still stick with the pouch for the run and gun playstyle of the first. As for the playstyle of the brain gun, it is most effective in medium range, but can definitely work fantastically at longer distances as well. It does struggle a bit in close quarter combat though, as the low fire rate makes it very difficult to kill the enemy before they kill you. If you chose the second setup, you'll be surprised at how easily you can control even a mag dump at medium to long range. You'll often get multiple kills in one magazine at those ranges, as headshots are a very easy thing to land, and you won't lose a lot of bullets to recall induced imprecision. For the first setup, I would recommend adopting a more mobile style of play, as it will be extremely potent at flanking enemies and wiping squads. With your 30 round magazine, coupled with the very high accuracy of the gun, it will be easy for you to kill an entire squad without reloading. Just spamming the A and D buttons while holding down your left click and controlling the low amount of recoil will usually be enough to keep you alive in those situations and still net you multiple kills and squad wipes. As stated in the other guides, do not be afraid to dump your entire magazine into smoke at long range or just the general areas where you suspect an enemy might be waiting behind. After just about 5-6 to six shots, you should be getting a 3D spotting mark over the heads if anyone is indeed at the location you shot at, after which you can easily adjust and get a few quick kills. You can use this gun on pretty much any map in every circumstance. The only real downside the brain gun brings is its inability to win TQC firefights. With the correct playstyle though, this can easily be avoided and as such does not impede the gun's efficiency in the current maps. Remember that as a support, your absolute best asset is your infinite ammunition. This will not only allow you to be the most efficient flanker in the entire game, but also allow you to pre-fire spots that other classes have to spend additional time watching instead. As such, do not be afraid to split away from your team and actively look for those flanking opportunities if you have chosen the first setup of the Brain Gun Specialization tree. This is what the gun and setup combination excels at. At this point, I want to re-emphasize the importance of pre-firing with the brain gun. This is the LMG with the lowest rate of fire in the entire game. In order to win firefights at close range, you will have to land a shot before the enemy does. Following that, don't be afraid to pre-fire positions you expect an enemy to be in and always pre-fire around corners where you know an enemy is waiting. Don't just wait until you can see the enemy to fire your gun. The recoil won't kick out of control and you will never run out of ammo in case there's no one around there after all. Once you start to internalize the pre-firing of spots, you'll unlock the real potential of the support kit and the brain gun specifically. It is an integral part of the class's design and role in the game. You won't win firefights against most other weapons if you don't. Additionally, you want to make absolutely sure you got the machine gun or combat roll equipped if you decide to use the brain gun. Even with your 30 round base magazine, you'll be suppressing and spawning people left and right in your normal gameplay, even more so if that's what you actually focus on doing. At long range, you can decide to burst in roughly 6 to 10 round bursts with the first spec tree, or go fully automatic fire if you're set up with a bipod in the second spec tree. Keep in mind that during the fully automatic fire, the last 4 to 5 bullets will kick more than usual. You will internalize the timing on those quite quickly due to the never changing 30 round size of the mag. 
First thing is definitely advice for the Bren gun, but it's not entirely necessary due to its low recoil and high accuracy stats. Follow the fire is definitely an option. As with the Lewis gun, I would not recommend hip firing this weapon unless you absolutely have no other choice. Due to the low fire rate and the bad inherent hip fire accuracy of the guns in Battlefield 5, you're more likely to die than to win a fight. Instead, try to run as fast as you can to the nearest cover. Even if it only buys you a second, it will allow you to go into ADS and then come out of cover already pre-firing the last known location of your assailant. This will be the superior choice for you to make in probably 9 out of 10 situations that present this hipfire versus fleeing dilemma. And lastly, the big elephant in the room, the magazine placement. Despite what most people think, you get used to the magazine in your FOV quite quickly, not even realizing it's there most of the time. As long as you keep the placement in mind, it won't impede your ability to function. That said, you can do things to decrease the impact of the magazine placement on your playstyle. If you push an area, try to clear it from the right side towards the left side, as otherwise the magazine might block your vision on a potential enemy that approaches you. Always sweep wide open areas from the right side towards the left side, due to the same reasons. When reloading, take the time to let your eyes wander over towards the right side of the screen and clear it that way. Make the reloading time an asset instead of a negative. If you keep those three simple tips in mind, you won't have any problems playing with a brain gun and can enjoy your time with it unimpeded. Overall, the Bren gun is the most underrated LMG in the game, due to its low fire rate and placement of the magazine in the player's field of vision. Despite those negatives, people like to overlook the gun's upsides, which are its unparalleled accuracy and control. If you are a fan of the large, wide sweeping maps such as Hamada, Narvik, or Aerodrome, or like to flank the enemy in general, this gun could do wonders for you, and you should really give it a go. With the potential that more people will pick up the brain gun after this guide's release, Here's a few tips on how to beat a player that is wielding it. Try to get into close range with them, as the hip fire is terrible and the rate of fire on the brain gun is among the lowest fully automatic fire rates in the entire game. Try to change positions often when engaging a target with the brain gun, as they're likely to pre-fire your last known location when they round the corner or jump out of their cover. Try to approach a brain gun wielder from the left side, as the magazine will block their vision towards your side. Think of it like an eye patch. With those last few tips for playing against the Bren Gun, I've concluded my guide. I hope it was informative and you learned something from it that you can apply to your own game. Please let me know if I missed anything or you would have wanted me to talk about anything in specific that I might not have covered. Also, let me know what your personal favorite loadouts are in the comments down below. Father, let me know if you'd like to see me cover a particular weapon in the support kit or assault kit. Maybe other kits later on the line as well. By popular demand, the next guide will probably focus on the top 3-5 to five weapons for the Assault Kit. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like or dislike button, and check me out over on twitch.tv slash LunarWolf, where you can watch me record the footage for these guides live and ask any questions you might have. You can find the link to my stream down below in the description as well. And with that, thanks for watching, and keep dropping those ammo pouches.